All right, guys, welcome back. And we're still working on our Hellstang project. And in the last video, we got our cylinder heads all installed, torqued down. And today, what we need to do is figure out our push rod length. So on this particular motor, since we went with aftermarket aluminum heads, we're going to be going with some uh, comp roller rockers. They're still a 1.6 rocker ratio. Uh, but because they're a, a roller instead of the stock stuff, we've also got an Anderson N41 cam. I just want to double check and make sure that we don't need to have a different size push rod. Um, so I ended up getting a checker tool from comp cams. So we're going to use that and be able to uh, test this out and kind of find out where we're at with push rods. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so for the procedure, everything that I've seen when I've been watching videos on this is guys will always use the number one cylinder, which is this guy here. So first thing we've got to do, since we're going with these um, comp, you know, uh, roller rockers, they're stud mount rockers. So uh, we take our two studs and our guide plate, and then we just sit that in place. I just kind of lined it up and I've just got them uh, hand tight. I need to go ahead and torque these down. And I think we're supposed to torque these to 55 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque those. All right, so now that we got these guys tightened down, we're gonna next uh, move on to taking our little dry erase marker here, this dude, and we're just gonna go ahead and put a mark all over the top of the, uh, the valve there. And what it's gonna do is once we get our rocker mounted and we get this thing turned over a couple times, it's gonna leave uh, a mark on here. We're gonna be able to see, is it right in the middle like we want it to be, or is it you know back or forward? And then that'll determine, okay, maybe we need to get longer or shorter push rods, uh, I think. If it's uh, too high, then we're gonna need a longer push rod. And if it's too low, we're gonna need a shorter push rod. I think typically when you switch to like stud mount um, rockers and high lift cams, usually you need a longer push rod, but we'll see. Next, we're gonna take our rocker. And again, we want the flat part facing up and this kind of uh, you know rolled part facing down. And so we're gonna adjust the intake valve first. And to do that, I was reading through comp cams instructions. They want us to rotate the motor over uh, until we see the hydraulic um, lifter coming up on the exhaust. And when that's coming up, then it says, then we know uh, the intake will be on the base circle of the cam. And then from there, we can make the adjustment. So we're going to go ahead, do that. Oh, I almost forgot. Can't put this on without our push rod, right? So just slide your push rod in, make sure it's in onto the uh, lifter, make sure it's in on the rocker. Cool, cool. We'll take our little nut. I think uh, comp calls them poly locks. So anyway, just kind of get that on there just for a minute. And let's crank this baby over. So we're just watching right now to see when, uh, when this bad boy starts to come up. All right, there it is coming up. So with the exhaust getting pushed up, we know this guy is closed. So from here now, we can go ahead, get this thing installed. Just make sure this guy's straight. And so basically when I was reading the instructions, um, it just says all you're really doing is taking out the slack, right? So you can see how there's up and down movement, there's rotational movement, and you just kind of tighten this thing down until, until that's gone, and then that's zero lash. So like right there, you know, there's drag, there's no more movement, you know, up and down, you can't hear it clanging. So that should be zero. And then these are really, really simple, uh, where it just says now you just go half turn. So that's it. Boom. Half turn, and I guess we'll go ahead torque uh, torque this guy down too. And so this just on the center nut just calls for uh, 20 foot pounds. Oh, you know what? But I need to hold that in place probably. Yep. So take our other 16 millimeter wrench, our 3 16 um, Allen head. I'm just gonna. Use it just to hold this guy in place. Okay. 
And what we're going to do now is we want to go through uh, two rotations. So there's one with our valve working. And basically this is just, you're just going through two times just to make sure we get um, some good uh, marks on our little mark. And then now we can just blow it apart real quick. And then we're going to check our mark, see what we got. And just be careful when you're removing this too that we're not moving it you know, too much side to side because we don't want to mess our mark up. All right. All right, guys. So here's our mark. Yeah, you can see it pretty good. So again, the mark looks pretty dang good. And so again, that's using, you know, an old, uh, you know, an old, you know, tired lifter that had 100,000 miles on it, right? So the factory lifters are 6.248 inches. But when you order them in the aftermarket, they sell 6.25. So the push rod is slightly, slightly longer anyway. And we can see you know, I'd say if anything, I mean, it's pretty dang close. If anything, it's a little bit up, um, but it's not bad. So we, when we go 6.250, that's probably going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and check the uh, exhaust valve too, just to kind of double check it and make sure. Now for checking the uh, exhaust valve on this side, what comp says is they want to see, um, you rotate the engine over and then you want to see the intake valve go all the way up. And then as it starts to come back down about half to two thirds down, that's where they want you to use your check or, you know, make your check for the exhaust valve. And again, that way we know we're on the base circle of the cam. So let's go ahead and just uh, get that all set up real quick. Get our handy dandy 24 millimeter here. All right, so we got our intake shooting up there. It's on the way back down. Okay, so. Looks pretty good there. So now let's go ahead, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, take your Sharpie. Get that bad boy Sharpied up. We're gonna pop this bad boy on there. And tighten it on down. Okay, give it a half turn. And we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this dude back down. Okay, dokie. Let's give her two revolutions. Take it all back apart again. All right, so. It's not looking too bad. Again, it's pretty, it's pretty dang close to the middle. All right, so just for kind of fun, I decided, you know what, let me just go ahead and try to do um, let me try this again, just also with this uh, push rod tool. So uh, this tool is 5.8 inches completely on there. And then each rotation is 50 thousandths. So I went ahead and uh, I wanted to get it to uh, 6.25. So that way it'd be, you know, kind of um, imagining what the new push rods that we'd buy would be. So uh, anyway, that's about nine turns, you know, five, 50 thousandths, five times nine, 45. So that's what we got. And I'm going to give it a shot and see because I just did another test um, just using the stock push rod and again it's close but it's a little bit high so I was like you know what let me just go ahead and adjust it so let's try this and uh, see if it gives us any different result all right so here's our mark now uh, with the push rod, I just got it all done, just got it torn apart. So this is with this guy at 6.25 inches. So this is, you know, theoretically where we'd be ordering the new push rods at. And 
it's close, but it is still kind of up too high. So we probably need to give it a shot a little bit more. So I'm going to just go two turns. So that'll be a uh, hundred thousand. So I think that'd be like um, 6.35. So kind of give that a shot to see if that moves us in the right direction. So we'll just take this little dude, go one more turn, go two turns and just kind of delicately drop this little guy back in there. Rinse, repeat, and let's, uh, let's see what we get again. Now, a lot of guys, when I was watching videos, um, they were actually using, they were pulling out like the stock springs and they were putting in like just super weak springs. And um, I guess that was kind of, I think the main thing was that they were worried about their push rod check tool getting like bent or broken from all the pressure of the springs. Um, and then I think secondly, they were worried about some, um, some of the plunger difference with like the hydraulic lifter getting pushed down or something. But anyway, I didn't, I don't have the tool to remove this now that my heads are on. So I was like, I'm not doing it. And um, again, you know, after just trying it just this last time with this, um, with this comp cams push rod checker thing, I mean, it seems totally fine. Like, so buy a quality tool and I think it'll work fine. You know, I think maybe if you buy some of the cheaper checker tools, maybe they would break, but this stupid comp cams thing, this was 30 freaking dollars, 30 bucks. Like a whole set of push rods is only 40 bucks and this stupid thing costs 30 bucks. So, you know, I don't know, but there was cheaper, like $10 ones on Amazon, but I figured, you know, we're doing some precise measurements. So let's just spend the money, go with a good quality one from comp or whatever. But anyway, that's just, uh, my two cents, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe if you have some crazy valve springs, like triple springs or something, maybe you, you would need, uh, need to do all that, but I don't know. This seems fine, but what do I know? All right, so I hope this shows up, but that's about, that's freaking perfect right there. I mean, that is bang on. So I added uh, another 100 thousandths over the, the 6.25, so I think we're at 6.35, um, if I know how to do math right, and that's definitely questionable, but all right, cool. I think, I think that's it. I, I mean, I guess I can measure this thing, double check it, right? But man, that comp tool turned out, so I mean, it didn't even rotate. You know, it's still perfectly where I put it, so... Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to double check this thing, kind of make sure it's what I think it is. But uh, where's the factory little push rod? So, yeah, here's the factory dude. So if you kind of put them side by side, yeah, it's quite a bit longer. Quite a bit, right? Look at that. Eighth of an inch. Sounds about right. So, okay. All right, so I just got done uh, testing the same thing for the exhaust valve, so it's still the same, you know, uh, two extra turns or 6.35 inches. And again, this one looks pretty good. Looks right in the middle. So, you know, that was the one we did on intake side. Here's the exhaust side. So I'm pretty happy with that, dude. So 6.35 inches, good to go. The only other couple's little small updates I wanted to show you guys. I did end up getting a uh, coolant temperature sender uh, that I popped into the manifold. So I got that the other day, you know, cheap, whatever it was, 10, 15 bucks. And then for um, boost pressure for like a, for a map sensor, why is it? Yeah, map sensor. I don't know why. I don't know why it sounds weird. But anyway, the Holly High Ram is pretty sweet. Um, it actually had a block off plate that the previous guy I got this from and put, had put on back here. So I didn't realize it. But um, anyway, so I unbolted that and then I was able to buy a GM three bar. Uh, just like an AC Delco map sensor. So this sort of came on like your, um, you know, newer model uh, Camaros, CTSVs, Corvettes that have the LSA and the LS9. Um, so super cheap sensor. It's like 30 bucks. And uh, I think that's either two and a half bar or three bar. So it's like 25 to 30 PSI, something like that uh, maximum, which again, we're running just wastegate pressure, you know, probably even if I cranked it up, probably no more than 12, 15 pounds max, right? So anyway, Pretty cool. At least now we got that in a good spot. I am probably going to end up running a lot of the vacuum lines off to a manifold block or like a vacuum block. Um, and then we can distribute all the vacuum out. But at least that's right there. It's cool. It's, you know, tucked away behind the manifold, clean. So I like it. All right, guys, the next video update will be once these uh, push rods come in, then we'll end up getting all the rest of the uh, roller rockers installed, get this thing 
finalized, probably put the gaskets on, put the valve covers on. Oh, actually, I need to also find a used set of some LS truck coils. So if anyone has any kind of uh, LS coils laying around, hit me up, let me know. I got to get those too because I need to modify, you know, put some holes inside of the valve covers to be able to accept the, uh, the, the uh, GM coils. So hopefully that'll be uh, coming up here really soon. So like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.